Hey traders, this is Ron Hayden at Market Tamer. Happy Sunday. Hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend. As always, everything in this presentation is for educational purposes only. We're going to be switching to trade station charts now that Thinkorswim disabled profit charts. Sayonara profit charts it was always a great platform to use, but we'll be sticking with trade station. They also have a really great product. Now, starting off with the daily charts, the SPY. We finished right up there near those all-time highs. Essentially, this is just topping out at a previous high point. Nothing's wrong with that. If you look really close, you could argue that that's a little bit of bearish engulfing. Yeah, but if there was there was not a lot of volume. We finished off the highs of the day, and we just had a nice push higher. There's nothing more to read in it, in my opinion, at this time. If we look at the diamonds, the DIA, same thing, stalling out at the previous highs. That's totally normal. Charts are still bullish. We take a look at the Qs. They got rejected up there on Thursday, pulled back a little bit Friday, but this is still, you know, frankly, from this point, it's higher highs and higher lows. You're going to have some of the big old bears out there screaming for double top pricing action. If there was mega volume, maybe there'd be a little more credibility to that thought, to so that statement. There just isn't. So the bulls still have the edge because we are above the 20-day EMA in red and the 50-day SMA, the institutional moving average in orange. If we look at the small caps, the IWM, I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit just to give you guys some context. But if I go back to... The September highs, the all-time highs, here's where we are now. I've been talking about how we're starting to close above some of these highs. We still need to clear that 160 area. Once that happens, then the target would be the all-time highs. I'll be interested to see if the small and mid caps here play catch up because if, let me get rid of this. If we go back here and look at the volume, you can see that. The volume is definitely picking up as we're exploding higher. This is positive price action, but we still need to get above that 160 area. Now, if we move to MDY, we go ahead and zoom in. Same thing, they're flirting with those previous highs. If I zoom out, you can see the all-time highs are back in September. Same story for MDY, the breakout's going to be ballpark, and this is always just rounding off to something. Let's move it up to like 363, and that would be considered a breakout. Got some questions on bonds. Just from a purely technical perspective, you know, here was a sideways action, and then there was a dip in March. It didn't really play out well. It was an instant reversed. Then it comes down, sort of hugs the 50-day. Then it breaks out, consolidates. And then in August, it really started shooting higher. We can see the explosion. And when you see volume coming in with an explosion, that just adds to the bullish technical picture, if you will. And then it just zooms higher. But look what's happening now. First sign of potential troubles, the 20-day EMA in red. The next is the 50-day. Well, look what happened on Friday. Friday, we broke through the 50-day, closed the lows of the day. Volume is now starting to take or out, outperform to the upside. It's higher than the black bars. So black bars are up days. Red bars are down days. They're standing taller than the black bars. The bears are now winning based on price action and volume. The target's going to be this consolidation range somewhere down here in the 132s. But bad sign now for if you're a bull on bonds. on field. Bears now have the edge. And then if we take a look at gold, silver, and the miners, there's been some price action here as well. There's the 20-day EMA in red. We got below it, tried to bounce, could not close above it, closed back below it on Thursday. Watch that 50-day. 50-day falls somewhere potentially in here. There's some congestion. I would probably go to the 130 area because that was the gap up and then a gap fill to 128 only if it gets below the 50 day. Now, silver, on the other hand, silver was down big on Friday, 3.61%, pick up in volume, close the lows of the day. The 20 day, since it pretty much got above it and the breakout started mid late July, it's worked. We've had touch points, bounces, not now. This was a hot knife through butter this time. If the 50-day is lost, the bulls have, would then lose complete control of the daily charts. If we switch to the silver miners, they did close below their 50-day SMA in orange. Lows of the day. Now, yeah, you could say volume isn't huge. Remember, I don't pay attention to the actual number. Here, it's 432,000. It's all relative, and I want to base it upon itself. Was that red bar really tall versus the others? No, it wasn't. But you closed below the 50-day. Therefore, the bears lose. I mean, if this was on huge volume, I would say the silver miners goose was cooked and we're now going to, I would say the probabilities of us pushing lower are even higher. But at this point, the last shelf support, there was a gap up around 26, mm -hmm. retested 26, 
and then it's been ebbing and flowing higher. I mean, even the 50-day back on August 19th was able to act as support. That did not happen now. So bears are getting the edge on the silver miners. We look at the gold miners, George Delta X-ray. They busted through already. And when the miners are outperforming to the upside, meaning they're leading GLD gold to the upside or SIL, silver miners, are leading SLV to the upside. They're outperforming to the upside. They're doing better to the upside on a daily basis. That's good if you're a bull. Well, when they're going down harder and sooner than the metals, that's a bad sign for the overall metals. So the metals themselves are rolling over. Now we're seeing the miners roll over. So I commented about this the other day. On the 9th, we broke below the 50-day. Back test, back test. Try to zoom in a little further. Look what happened on Thursday. Hit it, rejected, bearish engulfed. What happens today? No shock. Down we go. Another nearly 2% volume. On this, you can see this little line is the 50-day moving average. We, you could say here we're above average now. The selling days are definitely taller than the buying days. Bulls are losing their edge. Bulls goose is cooked here on the daily. Now, we could use Fibonacci retracements, go from here to here, and see if it's going to be a 50% retracement, et cetera. But I think the gap target right now at 24, a little support here around 23. Sorry, what is that? 20, 24 and a half, and then target 24. All right, let's move on to some other stocks. How goes the market? How, how goes Apple? How goes the market? Apple surged on the event, and now it just quickly gave it back. It's almost break even, just barely up ahead of that latest product announcement and conference. Historically, the stock does not do well until the end of September. This is a weak period. It doesn't mean it can't go higher, but you can't be shocked if it's flacked down because that's what the stock's own historical tendencies tell us. It's not like it's proprietary or a secret. It's just what the traders seem to do. And that's really telling when you start talking about a stock that's publicly traded more than five or 10 years. It's 20 plus years, right? All right, so right now, Apple's still bullish on the daily chart, but the little pullback on the daily here to be expected. Let's take a look at some other stuff. How about XEC? I just came across this one randomly. This is Semerex. Why do I like it? The stock was up at 75 in February. Now it's at 40. But the volume is what I like. Look at how that volume is popping. And on Friday, we just busted the 50-day, closed at the highs of the day, and above the 50-day SMA. We played ping pong earlier in the week. We break out. There's a little bit of ledge here at 50. We could say maybe a target. There's another ledge here right around 55, but then you go 60, then you go 65, almost in $5 chunks. So if I was a bear on this, you're put on notice. You just bust it through the 50-day, and look at these black bars. They are all beating the red bars, literally prior and after, and that's important to note. This is how the bulls are getting their edge on the charts. How about cars? Cars.com. Was it 20, then 18, then gulp, down below 10? Look what happened now. Spike in volume, close the highs of the day. Once it gets above 12, you could go to the 50-day, but then it's all the way up to a gap fill for technical targets. PGR is progressive. Let me zoom out a little bit here. The bottom in December, right? That was the massacre. Well, we had a nice rally back, as the whole market did. But here with PGR, you can see once we started breaking the 50-day, we couldn't really get back above the 50 or the 20. So there was reach. I'm going to zoom in and show you guys that. There was the rejection. And look what happened. Down. Oh, we hit it. Down. Now we can't even get above the 20 day. Now we try to get above the 20 day. And now it just gets worse. There was a big reversal off the lows of the day. But look where it came in. Right at support. That means anybody who bought in here, if we get below Friday's intraday lows on a closing basis, they're all wrong. Everyone that bought over here was wrong. Everyone that tried to buy intraday here was wrong. And where's the next support? Below, let's say, what was the intraday low there? Let's just look at it. The intraday low was 71.17. I could set an alert for 71 bucks. We closed below there. I would want to know about it because the next support level is way down here. Upper 50s, mid 50s. That's crazy. But that's because there was such a huge rally with no real pause in. So there's a huge air gap there. And I had a question on the British pound in general, FXB. Foxtrot, X-Ray, Bravo. With the news in Europe, there will be Brexit. The Brexit, there won't be Brexit. It's just amazing how the politicians keep messing around with the people over there. Um, we have a double bottom here, just under 117, around 116.50. We get above a 50-day, and now it's launched higher. The next consolidation zone is maybe 123 and a half-ish, up into 122. This target, that block right in here, would be the next area. But if I was 
trading bearish on the pound and I would see a pop like that, the goose, you know, you can't be bearish anymore because the charts are going bullish. It is what it is. So right now the pound is rallying. And a question on UNG. This is Natty Gas. The 50 day has pretty much been resistance. We started getting above it here. Now it's pushing higher. If I was trying to trade Natty Gas, which I'm not, you would just go to previous peaks or consolidations. So we got above this one. Or no, no, we're right there. We're right around 23 bucks. Then maybe go up here to this little double top around 25. We could then target gap fills. The next major reversal was probably up here in the 29s. We'll see if that happens. So that is it, gang. Wish you guys a fantastic week ahead. Like I said, the daily charts on the major indexes for SPY, Diamond, and Qs are bullish. I'll be back with you on Monday. Have a great rest of the weekend. We'll see you later.